All righty. Hey, everyone. Um, welcome to Scottish Summit 2021. Uh, it's been a whole year since the last one. Woohoo! Big shout out to Mark, Ian, and the rest of the organization team. Thank you guys very much. If you are looking to join the Let's Solve This Data Argument Once and For All discussion slash arguments with a good friend of mine, then you're in the right place. Um, if you're not, just stay anyway and hang out because it's going to get interesting. So first of all, before we start going nuts, uh, we will introduce ourselves and who these crazy people are that are on the call. But first things first, we'd like to thank some of our sponsors. So we're going to kind of split it up. You know, that's how these presentations are done. So first of all, big thanks to ScriptRunner, DQ Global, and Proximo3. And a big shout out to Redspire, Agilisys, and Hitachi Solutions. Awesome. So yeah, you can tell we practiced that. <laughs> anyway, so who are these two loony South Africans? Marty, do you want to go first, bro? Sure. Um, so my name is Martin. I'm a product specialist at Avanade, and I focus a lot on SharePoint and using SharePoint for various solutions. Cool. And uh, my name is Chris. I'm in the global Power Apps lead at Avanade. So yeah, it's just convenient that we work at the same place. We have before. And uh, I'm I'm an ex Dynamics person that that does loads of stuff in Power Apps and Power, well, Power Platform more specifically right now. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, please do. I can't guarantee that it's going to be uh, really really great information all the time, but <laughs> we do say some <laughs> random stuff. Actually, we have got quite a weird working relationship, don't we, man? From like a lot of history, a lot of history. Yeah. So um, Martin joined me at a place called Carabino, right? Yeah, in South Africa. That was that was nuts. Um, we we were both in pre-sales and um, guarded very carefully by our manager who <laughs> thought we were crazy people. And actually, a good friend of ours, Kyle Hill, used to work there as well. <laughs> so yeah, shall we get into this, man? Yeah, let's discuss yeah. it. Cool. So first things first, right? You know, we we often have these these chats around. You, you know, you see these slides all the time at places like Ignite and Inspire, and they're great slides. I mean. You know, all the information that's been given to us by Gartner and Forrester is always pretty damn good. But, dude, there is something on the slide, and I've highlighted it, right? And you know what my pet peeve is, don't you? It, <laughs> I do. I absolutely do. Yeah. Everyone everyone thinks that the Power Platform is just about apps, um, which is fine to an extent. I mean, some of it, but it's definitely not all of it. And we can list off loads of points, but it's everyone's like, oh, 500 million new apps will be built and you know the demand for mobile apps and i get i get that you know apps are really important people buy and use apps but i want to talk solutions in this scenario dude are you cool with that yeah definitely definitely for me is that's this, a big focus really yeah is this something that you see when you when you're talking to customers quite a lot dude everyone throws apps at everything um which is a big challenge because what happens is customers are always looking for solutions um to existing problems they don't want to sit and oh keep throwing the big argument is that it keeps throwing apps at problems and it doesn't solve anything you know no and an app is an app is just a smaller part of a wider solution right yeah there could be um, much more to it yeah and, and one of the things that actually piqued my attention on this slide deck was um it says the number of organizations with more than 100 terabytes of unstructured data okay has more than doubled since 2016 so i mean I just moved to the UK, but I remember when work when we were working together in South Africa and, and even doing the stuff we're doing now, even going to all those, I mean, you've been to all those Microsoft events, right? You know yeah. what to expect. There's always somebody in a lovely dress or a really awesome suit standing on, sa on stage saying, data is digital gold. And we're like, yeah, yeah. but yeah. nobody told us what to do with it. Yeah, it's just sitting there. I mean, uh... The amount of companies that are sitting with file shares with hundreds and hundreds of terabytes of data just doing nothing with it sort of just becoming an archive is it's huge it's massive and um you know what so that's why that's why i like this whole concept of using the power platform to do something about and with your data so i mean i know we're going to run through the next slide and in, in, in a bit more detail and before i go there I love that last point, right? It says over 85% of organizations struggle to analyze unstructured data. I always feel like it's because they probably don't have the right tool sets and capabilities. Yeah, it's that, but also it comes down to appetite. Eh? If you've got the right solution, then business will have the appetite to clean that stuff up a lot better, you know? That That's important. And actually, that's a good caveat onto the next slide, right? It talks about the different elements. So do you want to take, do you want to take the first bit here? 
Yes, I mean, I can talk a bit about um, these four sort of great areas on the power platform that we've been exposed to many times. Power BI obviously is a great tool for understanding your data and building some really pretty dashboards and, and analytics. Um, Power Apps is a great place to do, yeah, apps for your phone, apps on on the systems, and um, build some portals. Uh, Power Automate is great. I love Power Automate because um, you know it's a great replacement for the old legacy SharePoint sort mm. of workflow engine. You know that kind of evolved to some great degree at some point. And the new sort of kid on the block is uh, virtual agents. You know robotic process automation. Yeah, so I think I've always got this thing in my head. I call this the interaction layer. The one that I think people don't pay enough attention to, but is probably the most important is the data layer. Like I've always thought that, you know, with with and we're going to we're going to show some examples just now. But I think that with Power Apps and Power BI, you have to have the ability to get data and connect to data to make sure that you actually are doing something relevant with that interaction layer. Yeah. So the example I'll give you, man, is that You've seen a Power BI report without data. In fact, <laughs> we're going to show one. Yeah, just now, yeah. Yeah. I'm, it's interesting because it's irrelevant. It, it makes it's not relevant. And with, with what we've done with the Power Platform sort of on the data layer is that the core elements of data connectors, right? So we've got something. It's nearly 400 different connectors now that we can use to connect to pretty much any solution with an API. But as you said, the robotic process automation functionality, desktop flows, if it doesn't have an API, you can use that to connect up. Yeah, exactly. Um, the one I the one I really laugh at is people this AI concept of AI builder, right? So, as as we spoke about before, it's all information and elements of the 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 you know things like Azure and business applications democratized inside the data layer at Power Platform. But AI builder scares people, and for me, it's always been a bit like a horror movie. And you're going. <laughs> You're a crazy person. But let me, tell you, let me tell you why. Okay, just tell me if you think I'm right. So, have, dude, have you seen Paranormal Activity? Yeah. Okay, watch this. Right. So there's a scene in the movie where the door opens, like slams shut randomly. Yeah. Okay. Did what I do right there just freak you out? No, because I saw what you were doing. Yeah, exactly, right? But a Paranormal <laughs> Activity, you don't know. And you're like, oh, there's my no gosh, what's, yeah, what's doing that, right? And that's the whole concept of AI builder. It's actually you. It's been pellet. It's been put in a more palatable format for us to understand and use AI. There's no fear. It's not like Neo from the Matrix or Arnold Schwarzenegger are going to bust through the clouds and kill Skynet for it's us. Some weird encrypted code that nobody understands. Well, it would be cool though, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then Dataverse. Now, I know this is where you and I have had some had some discussions. So, like Dataverse is our cloud-based relational data storage facility, which is cool. And I love how they've put it as the go-to data storage facility in the Power Platform, but tell me something, man. Is it the only one? No. No, man, we can use SharePoint as well. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I, the other thing I think that's pretty important here is that we can waffle on about Dataverse all day, but actually there's another layer to the Power Platform, and that's around governance, compliance, and security. And I know you're doing loads of stuff with this. Yeah, dude, I always um, try and encourage to have them the, the right amount of governance in place. I mean, you'd hate to be having access to your data on the Power Platform, and then suddenly someone does something silly and, and shares data uh, publicly. They're not supposed to, you know? If you don't have all that uh, governance in place and making sure that people have access to the right data at the right time in the right tools, it's a nightmare waiting to happen. Yeah, I, I'll tell you something funny. I remember chatting to, uh, well, there was a partner when I was still at Microsoft, and they were using an example of something that had happened at a customer where, this person was capturing lead information and they'd written a, an automation that posted that leads that, that the fact that they'd gotten a lead on Twitter. Why right. would you yeah. do that? Yeah, great idea. Great idea. But, you know, great, uh, <sighs> great way of circumventing all the governance and compliance uh, around leads. And, and exactly. Deals. That's why we have that whole framework in the platform. Yeah. So. What I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to show you, I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but this is one of the slides that gets chucked out quite a lot. It's called, can I do movie voice for this? The digital feedback loop. <laughs> and the digital feedback loop is supposed to be this, like, this concept of bringing data through a process where you're constantly looping data through a centralized source and collecting and gathering and growing. And this, this funnel 
talks about the four, well, the five components of um, of the digital feedback loop as as a sort of foundation. Data is always king or queen, always. Data is the absolute. It's digital gold. Everything yeah. is reliant on data. The next layer is your platform layer. It's Azure, right? So infrastructure platform. It's really about building out those foundations, and then power platform is not your platform layer. Essentially, it's application platform. Yeah. Right. So it's that weird little thing that lives between SaaS and, and platform. And then Biz Apps or Dynamics is effectively a power app. And combined with the M365 functionality, Azure, M365 and Biz Apps act as the burger, the burger buns. Yeah, the power platform. Yeah. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit around like what actually this data story means, because we're consistently and constantly talking about the fact that we need to collect it. But right. I know, I know you love the slide, but I'm going to let you take this next one, right? So, all right. So, as you can see, this is what a Power BI dashboard, no matter how pretty it's been built, would look like without any data. You know, if you can ingest as much data as you like, but if you're not representing it and doing something sensible with it, it's not going to look very pretty at all, and it's not going to be of any value. Obviously, putting the data in, you get a much better view. Business can make decisions based on what is here. Um, there's actual real world usage for having good dashboards and making sure that the data is clean and you're getting the right metrics out of it. Yeah, same goes for apps. I mean, um, you know, an app without data is just a, just a front end that's non-functional. Um, you know, adding data into the mix makes the app usable, makes it intuitive, makes it interactive. And there you get exactly what you need. The, the reason I'm laughing so much is because I know you, I know what you're going to say with this next one. That, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, oh, this is this this slide is all about the war between where should we put the data. Uh, Chris Chris likes to call it the, the data Armageddon or the war, the great war around data, and we fought constantly around. Well, in the beginning, we fought constantly about where data sits. I was always pioneering the SharePoint list data. Um, Chris, you're always pioneering dynamics, um, you know, and we butt heads many times, and I'm sure many other people have butt heads about it as well. <laughs> you know yeah. what? I don't even feel bad, man, because <laughs> genuinely back in back in the day when – it was like 2011, actually, when, it all, when, when a lot of this started up. Yeah. And – um. I know you know your SQL. I know SQL. Um, we've both we both worked at, both worked with Dynamics and SharePoint. And because I'm a a proper Dynamics fanboy, well, I was. I'm a data source agnostic now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> taken <laughs> years, but now you are. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting because most of the time when when I remember fighting about this, it was always around the same type of thing. Like, you know, SharePoint X is a great container for types of data, CDS or common data, Oaken Flexiverse or whatever we're calling it this week, <laughs> acts as a great container for, for data, same as SQL. But the one that I think is quite interesting on this slide is the Excel data storage facility. And, and Dude, people are on. still addicted to mm -hmm. Excel. They love Excel. The business love Excel. I mean, to this day, mm -hmm. uh, that is, that's been what's been sort of the most prolific thing around SharePoint lists, okay? So the big thing about SharePoint lists and why business love them so much and why IT love them so much is because you can plug Excel into them, you know? Yep, I did it <laughs> recently. I did a hackathon recently. Yeah. And actually, so the thing that I always, always freak out a little bit about with Excel is that it is like a really great platform for citizen developers. Oh yeah, definitely. But here's my thing, right? So how secure is Excel? Jeez, I mean, it's secure to the point where it depends what you're talking about, dude. Yeah, the file itself yeah. is not secure, okay? No. But if we were gonna if you if we were gonna start talking about other things that are not related to data, they are ways to secure it. But it's it's cumbersome, you know, and it's not ideal. Mm -hmm. And that's the worry I have. I mean, I know the NHS lost a lot of data through not securing Excel or spreadsheets properly, rather than Excel. Yeah. And um, my but worry is always it's not yeah. It's not, um, there's no. There's no row level security. There's no database driven security. There's no column based security. You can't obfuscate the data. There's, it's just data sitting in a file. Exactly. And my biggest thing is that when you look at huge, huge use cases, so if I pick use cases like uh, inspection management or antisocial behavior, 
which are outside of the remit of a lot of what Excel can do, yeah. and people hammer that data in there, it's not treating that data with respect. Definitely, definitely. So you know what, man? I'm happy to tell you that after you and after chatting to a mate of mine called Paul Cumsey, uh, I wasn't. I'm still not necessarily sh- sold on <laughs> certain data stores, but um, I'm definitely sold on the fact that we have to rethink the way we do things. Definitely. Right. And Paul, Paul, so Paul and I created this this YouTube show. It's it's bonkers. It's called Data Beer and Devil Horns. Quite frankly, if you are an Uber nerd and you want to listen to us talking nonsense about heavy metal and and data and you know fighting about stuff, that's the channel to go to. He's a brilliant author. Um, he's got his book out. Um, I need to actually post the link. Um, but just search him on search him on Twitter or LinkedIn. Absolutely fantastic guy. And if you're looking to understand a bit more around identifying different problem types, identifying the types of solutions you could use for those problems. He's one of the guys to follow. But one of the things we figured out was that after chatting to you and him, all of us, and I, I'm in hundreds of WhatsApp groups and you know get loads of, loads of messages on Twitter and, and LinkedIn, but we build stuff using technology we understand all the time. And we often let budget get in the way. So the explanation I'll give you is that as a person that understands relational data structures hopefully very well, I neglected to think or want to use something like SharePoint as a data structure. And the reason for that, man, is, yeah, because I was so completely sold, and I still am, by the way, that uh, Dataflex, or sorry, whoa, bad, Chris, that's a fine Dataverse. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I I was so sold that that was always the right thing to do. And I know we're going to get into a discussion shortly about, like, the different types, but now that I've had the opportunity to learn a little bit more around the different types of data structures out there and the different types of solutions I can build, I've kind of opened my mind a bit, right? So I understand that it's not always just about one data source. So check this out. This is something that I love. Now, if you look at organizations, these are, and I know we can't just bucket things into five buckets. No, definitely not. Yeah. No, exactly. Sometimes things are blended, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I know that, right? So I'm, I'm being a little bit selfish in the fact that I'm kind of doing that. But in Power Platform, we see loads of different types of solutions being built, all the way from like you and me type productivity to organization-wide initiatives. And they all have different layers and flavors. But as you can see in the slide, they talk about the fact that we have to be comfortable with letting citizen developers take on 80% of those smaller solutions and us as IT professionals taking on the larger types of solutions, right? So uh, does this resonate with you? Does this make sense? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you can, I mean, some, sometimes a lot of the solutions in business are really simple, quick, processed oriented. Um, it's it's somebody that wants to get some information to some place at some point in time based on a bit of criteria. I mean, if, if you can get citizen developers to handle that workload, that can take a huge pressure off IT around some of the more important stuff, you know? Spot on. The other thing, dude, and this is one of the things that I I absolutely identify with, who are closer to the problem? Is it it the person that's picking up the phone and speaking to somebody or is it IT? It's definitely not IT, dude. I mean, the business process is often better understood by the people that are in the pain. You know, like if somebody's dealing with a process like um, uh, a procurement process, something simple, like where you need to take a receipt and you got to go take it somewhere and you got to get it signed off. The person that's handling that receipt is the person that understands the frustrations. Spot on. And that's the point that I was trying to get to is because a lot of the time, as a, so I'm an ex-IT admin. When I was in South Africa before I moved over to Carabino, like I was working as an IT administrator. So I ran all the software solutions and I, I installed all the office products and did all that jazz. And I know I spent most of my times making sure the icon was in cornflower blue. And that's to quote Fight Club. One of the most irrelevant things for me to do. I don't care about that, man. What I care about is data, security, compliance. But those, the people that are closest to the problem, it matters to them. Yeah, it is important. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't want to have to worry about all these huge solutions. So my theory is, is that when you're starting to look at building out these types of solutions to solve problems, you know, there will be certain data storage facilities that help you solve the problem, right? Now, you and I both know, this is this is one of my favorite things when I when I turn on the slide, you and I both know that there are dozens of these out there. <laughs> yeah. And they all and they all have different comparisons, you know? Yeah. 
So let's compare using SharePoint to Dataverse. In my opinion, there is no comparison. You can't do that because you're not comparing apples and apples. Yeah, they can both they can both solve the problem, but they're not necessarily fixing the actual issue. They're not def- they're not providing the, the the whole solution. Exactly, and and a lot of the time, I mean, some people on the call might not agree with me when I say that, but. To me, a SharePoint list is used in a very different scenario to when Dataverse is used. Now, I don't think we make this very visible, and I don't think we make this, we, we give enough detail about this. So I think for the next half of this call, let's show people how to make those decisions. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Because I'm so tired of doing comparative data storage discussions when it it can't be. You can't do that. It's so yeah. different. So it's solution based, dude. So yes, yeah, let's explain it out better. Yeah. So use case focus, right? And and don't just think it's always going to be one. That's the tip I'm going to say. Like let's 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 focus on use cases, right? So we've got four. Okay. So I'll rattle through them and tell me if you call. Cool. So time and expense, we all have to do. Oh, yeah. yeah. You and I know it, everyone knows it. That, that's that, that's quite a big type of solution. So everyone in the organization will normally have to capture time, expense, or both. The next one, inspections. Now, the reason I've been particularly vague about these is because inspections can be anything to anyone. I can go and inspect a vehicle, or I can inspect an Excel document. Awesome. It's happening. Yeah, could Whatever. be anything, right? Yeah. This one is interesting. Team provisioning process. Now, I know you've been doing a fair amount of this. And, um, <laughs> do you want to explain this one? Yeah, so I mean, like the big challenge here, this is this is something that comes back to the governance and compliance discussion that you and I were having a moment ago. And we and, you know, I'm always like flying this flag around governance because the great the, the thing that business hates. Well, actually more IT. IT hates sprawl. You know, they just hate sprawl in the environment. I mean, imagine 20 teams named a uh, basketball club in the oh, same business. Course. You know what I mean? That's just frustrating. I mean, how do you clean that up? Nobody knows which one's the most relevant basketball club in the business. Um, and so, yeah, so this is something that um, that I'm passionate about, is making sure that this is followed correctly. <laughs> I think I think I love the concept of teams Armageddon avoidance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great term for it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's, it's so true. And the last one, uh, this one's an interesting one, and it's a very, very important one. Is antisocial behavior now? Not us doing antisocial behavior. That was my youth. I'm past that. <laughs> but more, but more around how do you how Me do you too, manage? Man. Yeah, how do you manage? You know, reported cases and things. So, yeah. what I've done is I've taken the liberty of building up this very detailed, very well thought out table. <laughs> I stuck to the, the standard blue. And I, I've kind of broken it down into like those sort of four sort of four of those areas. Now, what I want to do is quickly just shoot back to the slide here. Okay. And just bear in mind these levels. Okay. So this is your level of complexity and the number of users. So kind of screenshot that in your head. Okay. So everyone that's watching this, screenshot the slide in your head or take a screenshot, um, whatever works for you. Yeah, Make it weird and post it in the chat. Yeah. Okay, now let's run through this real quick. So we said it was going to be use case based. So the first one, on the move, time and expense capture. So we know it needs to be available here. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Organization wide. So it's going to be a lot of users. Yeah, it'll be everybody. Everybody's going to have to capture time and expenses. Well, definitely expenses at some point. Yeah. And then the why, well, large amounts of data, you're going to have receipt management, you're going to have loads of unstructured pieces of information. Um, it's not hugely relational. So you're going to have like a person and a expense record with expense lines. So in my opinion, uh, I don't find that hugely relational. To me, it's quite structured. Um, and then, you know, when you're doing your queries, it's not going to be the, the queries aren't going to be huge. Dude, right? We need a buzzer. Yeah. You and I should have a buzzer each so that we could buzz our answers in here. <laughs> yeah, we actually should. Okay. So I'm going to say, um, I, 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 you see, it's not really fair because, like, I can see, I can see, but okay, I'm going to, I'm going to compare, right? So, <laughs> what would you say? Would you say it's like one one data source? Would you say it's more? Do you, you mean from my perspective? Yeah, yeah. 
I would put the stuff in SharePoint. Yeah. Because I would want to put the receipts somewhere. I would want to. I would want to put uh, physical receipts from my phone. I would want to capture it and upload it into SharePoint, and then that should somehow be tracked. Cool. Do you want to see what I put? What did you put? I've got SharePoint yeah. SQL. Nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Cool. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise we didn't plan this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this one's this. The reason I put SQL in there is because what I would probably want to do is migrate as much of that sort of bulk data out of SharePoint, out of the list stru structure into um, into SQL. Well, especially the time capturing stuff. Yeah. yeah, but it's not, you could do this with Dataverse really easily. The thing though, is that for a, for a T&E app, right? You have say like 10,000 users paying for a premium connector, a premium license. Is it's it worth expensive. it? Expensive, yeah. Yeah, is the juice worth the squeeze? Business might not uh, might not sign that off. Not, might not sign that deal off. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, <laughs> we've got to we've got to try and figure it out, right? So that's probably what I would do. The SQL bit, I don't know so much, but I know the unstructured data needs to live in SharePoint for sure. Also, depending on security and stuff, I feel like you know a hybrid of those two would be really good. Yeah, SQL would be a good place to do a bit of obfuscation for the data, so that people's privacy is respected. Yeah, I kind of like want to be idea. uploading receipts on an open document library and then it's not safe, you know? The, the only thing, though, is that SQL is still a premium connector on Power Apps. Yeah. So maybe what you might do is you might use it as like an archival system. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So you use uh, SharePoint as the first first port of call and then yeah. just put it into a SQL backend and then, it's, and then it's there for reporting purposes as well. It's definitely, yeah, that's what I liked about it is that you could run all your, your Power BI reports directly off that instead yeah. of like trying to hit a SharePoint list. Actually, yeah. I mean, we'd have to check multiplexing rules around premium and you know passing data up. But you're not reading data from SQL. You're reading data from SharePoint. You're just giving SQL data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, so okay. Results and historical. Yeah. I like it. So this is one one example. Sure, happy to take um, happy to take comments from people if they if they think anything else. I mean, obviously, like I said, this is use case based. This is not like a hard rule. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna let you take this one, right? Which one? Because... My team's provisioning one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So again, I would say SharePoint. You know, like because it's a great place to build a nice form. You can create some nice conventions and naming. Make sure that things are driven by drop downs and people aren't typing things in. You know, people can type words and spell things in all sorts of ways. Um, and uh, you can check to make sure that the things have actually been created already or not. So you can do some sanity checking to make sure that stuff hasn't been built twice, you know? Mm -hmm. I agree. So you're going to laugh. You're going to, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see if I'm right. Okay. So let's do it. So I said again, <laughs> SharePoint SQL. Nice. All right. And I have, I have reasons for it, right? I don't think it's SharePoint. And I don't necessarily think it's SharePoint and SQL in this scenario. I think it might be an or. Just depending. The reason I didn't use CDS again, um, it's it's more on the capacity storage capabilities, because if you have lots of requests that come in, like thousands of them, you might knock that database up again. But it's not highly relational, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do it with CDS. You could actually do it with Dataverse. Sorry, CDS, Dataverse, or Dataverse for Teams. You could actually do it with both, I guess. Especially for templates. Especially for yeah. driving a template, you know. I think we need to explore this one. So you've got it living on SharePoint and then, I, wait, don't you also have Dataverse plugged in at some point on this one? Uh, yes, uh, yes. And a bit of um, some Azure stuff as well. So it can become quite a complex solution, you know? All right, so I might not have been 100% with SQL. Okay, so I, I'll take that knock, that's cool. But yeah, it's just the old nerd in me coming out. <laughs> but it's relevant, <laughs> you're right, you could, yeah. Yeah. Right. The next, this this one's an interesting one. Um, inspections. I can tell you. So I know you and I have both done some time, you know, building out solutions like this. Yeah. I've got a weird opinion on this one. Okay. The reason. I, okay. So I'm not going to tell you what I put. Right. But I think that number one, SharePoint will work for this to an extent. Yeah. But but there is a much wider discussion around to have around how inspections are built and also the relational integrity between those types of records. So I'm going to use facilities management as an example. FM has got a big hierarchy, man, big, big hierarchy. In fact, the relational hierarchy in a facilities management solution is pretty deep yeah. and housing associations as well. And then when you go down to the asset level, if you're doing inspections on facilities or assets, you've got to have that layer of the hierarchy. 
Then you have to have the layer of the hierarchy where you're doing your inspection. So it could be related to um, there will be people involved. There will be multiple people doing the inspections. You will also have to link it to multiple layers of that asset hierarchy. So the moment I looked at these, these more complex inspection types, you can do flat inspections in SharePoint, fine. The moment it gets to that relational structure, I'm moving out to Dataverse for Teams or CDS, and I wouldn't do this in SQL either. And the reason is because of the way the relationships are built. You need many-to-many -many type structures, and security on this is massive. So if you're going into an oil rig and you're doing, doing an inspection there and it needs to be audited, you've got all that audit data living inside um, inside CDS or well, Dataverse as well. So I, I would say SharePoint as the base for like a very simple one to store unstructured data as well as the list. I would then move out to Dataverse for Teams, going into like, okay, well, this is a bit more of an involved inspection, but we don't necessarily need the same level of security and auditability. When that solution grows up, it ticks over to Dataverse. And like, I would stop at Dataverse. What do you reckon? Yeah, I agree. I agree partly. I think it would be a combination of those because um, if you think about, like you spoke specifically around oil rigs and, and housing, but if you think about way leaves, you know, how important way leaves have to be correctly tracked in that. I think SharePoint will always be in the mix somewhere because um, you don't want to be capturing that physical document by no. hand. You know, you want to be able to generate those documents. So I think SharePoint will always be in the mix at some point. So it would be it would be kind of like a hybrid between them. You want to see what I put? Let's see. <laughs> how brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So you see, dude, because the, the, as much as as much as I detest SharePoint lists from a from a relational data structure perspective, it, has it keeps value. on popping up. Yeah. And same with same with Dataverse. Okay. This ASB one, I can tell you right now, man, it was very I, I built this. Okay, and I've included it in here because I know I know the structure is really, really important. So I know, first of all, we know that there's document generation. So antisocial behavior behavior, for those of you that don't know, is when somebody does something naughty and a person will report them to a housing association or a local gov organization or the yeah. police. And I'm weird that, so, gets involved. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell you something a bit scary now um, in the UK. So this is not a nice thing, but domestic cases have gone up 50% since lockdown. Jeez, that's Five, oh, yeah, it's crazy. Now, people, people logging these, the security around this data is so so it's of paramount importance and it also yeah. dude you need to be able to track crud against every piece of data so if you've got jeff from accounts randomly accessing a domestic case inside the asb solution oh you violated the security of the platform already yeah it's broken it means that i mean you have to be able to obfuscate data down to field level you also have to securely manage documentation yeah you can't just wing it into a, a file store it's got to be properly managed so like my opinion okay i would think that it would be a big cross okay the sharepoint side from the documentation perspective is there it has to be there yeah for cases especially yeah. for cases and also because you know sharepoint has the ability to e-hold and, and discover stuff if you have to lock it down so that things can't be destroyed you know that kind and, of and search of data is critical and search yeah definitely mm -hmm. um the other thing that i th that i thought was because this will not be a canvas app it's just not. This is way too, um, what I would say, line it's of business regular. focused. Yeah. yeah, you need to have you need to have the model driven process UI. Canvas will be part of it to an extent, but I think like you need to have the security structures. So I said Dataverse. I wouldn't even try and replicate the security structure in SQL. Just wouldn't cut the mustard. Um, yeah, because of the, and also because you can Dataverse supports so much around obfuscation. You know. Yeah. Uh, data masking for, for those who want to use the, the simpler term, you know, just being able to mask data so that uh, people's privacy is protected. Uh, it's really that's key. critical, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious what I would have selected, but those were my two. So SharePoint yeah. and Dataverse. Yeah. Definitely. Awesome. I mean, cool. so this, dude, this exercise, I go through this exercise quite a lot when I look at solutions and I, I always go back and try and map them back to that, like that, that sort of vector diagram goody thing. Yeah. Where I need to know where in the scale they are. And I'm going to bring up something a little bit later that's going to show you, I'm going to show you something around cost. But based on all of this, right? So now we've gone through a number of data storage facilities. When you start looking at what's gone on from a licensing perspective, so we were talking about price and value. Okay. You take a look at this. 
these are the different options from a power platform perspective and there's loads now later on um i know that there is a licensing session in one of the channels and it's definitely good for you guys to go and check out but what you need to start doing is start thinking about where and why these things fit together okay in no world is it going to be one type of license and in fact if you speak to speak to some of the customers and partners out there it's always going to be a big hybrid of them it's going to be quite a mix right so the example i'll give you is that it's fine to build a load of solutions directly with an 0365 that that license there okay you can use canvas apps you can use power automate uh well sorry let me rephrase that you can use cloud flows naming conventions right and you can buy separate licenses for you know other parts of it so you can have other premium connectors and things but you have to start thinking is when you start building out your solution structures and you start looking at the different types of storage are they premium or are they not sharepoint's not premium yeah yeah it's not you can build pretty much anything on excel and sharepoint and do it within your office license dataverse for teams is not premium you can do that within your office license dataverse and sql are premium mm. so you have to look at the solution and say okay let's look at something like this a team initiative mm, awesome i could probably put, put that into sharepoint and sql but would i really would i really want to put it in sql is it, is it like a required yeah yeah so and why right so you've got to think about is the juice worth the squeeze from a licensing perspective and actually what can i do here okay and what can I do with the premium connectors? And what I found, and I don't know about you, man, but I found this working with a number of with a number of customers and you know people within the the technology space. We constantly try and hammer solutions into the cheapest option. Oh, all the time. Yeah, I see it a lot here. Yeah. Which is fair because you know we don't want our we don't want customers to pay billions, but we want them to get value. However by doing that we often take away from the quality of a solution and that's what scares me so benjamin franklin makes the quote he says the bitterness of poor quality remains long after the sweetness of a low price is forgotten now it's normally at this point i get my tattoos out and start showing you why i hate this one and i love this one but i'm not going to do that today we're going to take a more pragmatic approach to this and that's going back to our little diagram yeah right? now what i see a lot of okay and and I want you to tell me if you see this right off this, right? So what I see a lot of is that people will try and implement mission critical type solutions that are complex into the same technology that's built specifically for personal team productivity. It's just not possible, dude. Sometimes, well, I mean, it's going to take a lot of work. Yep. You know, uh, the cost to implement will be higher than the cost of the of the technology. Does that make sense? Exactly that. And that's the point that I was hoping you were going to draw out is that time and value are not paralleled no they're not definitely not no they're perpendicular and when you look at cost cost is there as well right so here's the analogy i'll give you if i am building a line of business mission critical solution that that has lots of functionality in the front end if i'm building that on top of technology that isn't built for that reason right i'm going to be doing more from a time perspective so sure you'll get what you need but you're going to be paying me a lot more Rather than look, oh, not honestly, the hours you're going to be you're going to be burning developing yeah. hours till you're blue in the face. And and the most honest thing I'm going to say to anyone from a licensing perspective is you're going to pay someone at some point. You just mm. got to pick. Do you pay the partner from a services perspective to build and build and build and create technical debt, or do you pay Microsoft from a premium perspective to use the stuff that's already built for you? Something that's already functioning close to what you need. Yeah, and this is not a case of you'll get away with either one. You won't. You've got to pick yeah yeah and no world can a solution that is mission critical or large value here cost the same as that it's just it's not, not possible. Fair. yeah it's just not possible <laughs> yeah but then do look at it from the other side right look at it from using something like dataverse to build a piddly little personal team productivity solution that's like buying a ferrari and driving oh, it it's overkill. Down yeah. The road. it's overkill yeah yeah so like how often do you see this type of thing a lot I thought you might because it scares me. So what I want to do is I want to start thinking about wrapping up and I, I want to show you the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen, right? So bearing in mind that it can never just be one data storage facility, bearing in mind that your licensing structure is always going to differ and it's always going to be a combination. 
technical folk, you have to get good at licensing. It's just how it is. This is not a commercial thing anymore. When you build stuff, you need to understand the cost of building things and why. Yeah, and uh, it's not just a, it's not just a, oh, I need to have this or I need to have that. It's about switching things on. Yeah, exactly. And and all the things you see in front of you from a hybrid model perspective, they all work together beautifully. They all work together absolutely beautifully. We just need to know when to pivot on top of them and when to use them. So it's not just a case in point of Dataverse works every time and SharePoint works every time. It will always be a mixture. I love the way we snuck lists in there. <laughs> You've been doing some stuff with lists, haven't you? Yeah, lists is beautiful. And business loves lists because you know what? It's SharePoint. It does what you want and it looks so pretty. <laughs> Mate, I've, got to, I've got to get cracking on this because I'm still, I do the, I do the, the last four. Right, yeah. I haven't touched lists yet, so I will make you a promise. I'm going to start building some stuff on lists. Oh man, you'll love lists. Lists is good. Lists is lists is lists is um, SharePoint with with uh, lipstick on. Oh man, well Daniel Laskovitz would be happy hearing that. So I'll tell you what, you have my sword. Okay. Right? Good. <laughs> so I want to wrap up and just say, this is important. As consultants, as people working with organizations, whether you're a customer, a partner, a Microsoft person. You know, Ryan Jones said this to me. Ryan Jones heads up Dataverse and Microsoft. He's an absolute legend. And I remember we were chatting on Teams one day and he said to me, never be afraid to challenge because it is you who will lead the transformation of an organization. Okay. We always talk about digital transformation and this and that, but actually it does start somewhere. And sometimes it starts with an app and it grows much bigger. Sometimes it starts with a solution. Sometimes it starts with a program. But remember, you as Power Platform people are responsible for giving customers the best advice. And if you don't know, learn. Just like Martin taught me and Paul taught me about, you know, understanding where things work from a list perspective, I would encourage you all to learn up and down the scale. Don't yeah. just stick to your tech. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I had to learn other things that I didn't know that you taught me plenty. Oh, likewise, man. And, and look, it's a journey, right? So I just want to say a big thank you to all of you for joining this event. Um, you know, it's been it's been epic. We've had we've loved presenting. You know, we don't shut up and we can talk tech for hours and hours. And yeah, if you ever want to reach out, you know, we left our Twitter handles or just send us a carrier pigeon or something. You know, we don't really mind. But I would encourage you as two very different people from very different worlds. Yes, we're both South African, but we come from very different technology backgrounds. We are able to work together in a hybrid approach to engage the full stack of the power platform. Do you want to add anything, man? Oh, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for letting us present. And um, yeah, big up to um, to everyone who's still flying the SharePoint flag. I'm so proud of you guys, especially you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Never tell anyone that. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for stack. And yeah, we'll see you soon. Cheers.